Okay, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of live demonstrations, so please don't get used to it. Just knocking this out of the way real quick. Now I do a lot of live demonstrations on my um, on my Facebook channel. Uh, great deal of those on there. Uh, different live demonstrations that different companies I work with over there. But I'm gonna do this fast demonstration on painting a sheet of plexiglass, which will be added into the title because for some reason when you do live. They only allow you to put in 60 uh, charters in there, or 60 characters in there. Now, keep in mind, I'm not in here to be insulted, to have people come here and carry on. It just please be respectful, all right? There's a lot going on in the world, COVID and everything else. A lot of people are going through a lot of heavy struggles. So it's just uplifting for people to show them how to paint a screen on plexiglass. Do this in no time at all. All right, so these live demonstrations, this live demonstration we post on the website. So very simple. We got, how you doing, how you doing? I hope you're safe, all, all is well with you. Uh, we got an everyday um, uh, roller, doesn't make a difference. I buy mine from Dollar Tree, so it really doesn't make a difference. Sheet of plexiglass. We're gonna be using a Casio 720p projector. Um, settings on this projector I will show you is actually a 16 brightness uh, minus one in contrast it's an eco mode level one we're in a fully lit environment I see plenty of light uh, measuring tape comes in starts with the projectors at the front let's go all the way to the very end well, let's go from here to here to show you where we stand at so around 10 feet to get that a little correctly 10 feet and some change away from the screen on our Casio 720p projector. I've used that before in a few. So it's going to be a fast demonstration because I still have another 40 more orders that came in last night for the black ever since I painted the giant screen over there. And uh show you how fast this is. So here's the paint right here. All you got to do is stir it up. That's it. This has already been stirred. Stirred. Take it. Apply it to the surface. That's it. And this stuff spreads pretty good because I thought it was going to take me two quarts to knock that out. It didn't take me two quarts. All right. Come over here, take a roller. There's no priming involved because when we first developed this stuff, as I said before, when a 12 was developed, the 12 was designed for a, our own personal uh, fixed frame and motorized projection screens. All that got scrapped because when COVID hit, we couldn't do it. As a matter of fact, I might even paint this tarp later on today and use this. But yeah, because a few people have been asking me about tarp. Like, can you paint tarp with it? Yeah, I'm gonna paint this tarp, turn that into a screen. But anyway, so, show you how easy it is to paint. It's a one coat application. Don't have to be a professional painter. And that's it. Done. That's it. Done. There you go. Now as the screen starts to dry, it will get lighter. As we all know, when it's dark, it's going to be... And yes, it's ultra short though compatible. You can see I got my Optima GT56 right there. I'm going to point you over here in this direction because I'm not dressed. It's in the morning and I look like... Like I just crawled out of the grave, literally. So I'm really uh, kind of tired. Uh, so let's lift this up. We're gonna put this over here against those chairs. I'm not worried about it marking my floor because the stuff washes off with hot water and soap. So I'm not worried about that. I splattered paint from other places. So let me get this situated. Situated. There we go. So we're situated right over there. Okay. I'm not worrying about any paint marks on the floor because the stuff washes off. Like I said, very easy. A little hot water and soap. And that's it. Let's come over here. Let's turn on our projector. So we're using our Casio 720p projector. That's what we're using. There you go. Wet screen. 
I even got the fan on. So keep in mind, this is a live demonstration. There's no editing, there's no special effects, none of that. You just saw me paint that screen in a couple minutes and I'm done on plexiglass. No priming, none of that. This is new technology we had years ago. We just didn't bring it out because, like I said, it was custom designed for our own lineup of fixed frame and motorized screens. I talked about this last year. that We had a lineup coming up with these screens and this particular coating was designed to be sprayed on. So we were going to be renting out Thank you, thank you so much, I appreciate that. We were gonna be renting out a, um, those, one of those factories they use for painting cars, those machines. That's what we were gonna be using to coat our screens down because it's been a perfect application. It's a machine that's doing the job. And that's why when the 12 came out, it was like milk because that's what it was developed for. But that scrap, we can't do that now. So we decided to bring it out as a screen paint. And when I first showed it off, I had somebody come in, oh, it's gonna be five or $600. Have you seen the prices on our screen paint? They're extremely reasonable for what the technology can do. And I've already had three offers from three different companies, I'm not gonna name names, that are, want to buy the technology. Now, if we sell it to them, I'll make a bundle of money, of course, I mean, it's money I could use, but eh, what are they gonna do with it? They're gonna take it, they're gonna put it on the screen, they're gonna mark it up like four or five grand. And that's not what I got in business for. I got in business to even the playing field so everybody can have a screen. So it's still wet. Sitting there soaking wet. I haven't put the fan on it yet. But that shows you how the colors pop and explode off the screen. Um, like I said before, any black screen can produce contrast. The most important thing for a black screen to be able to do is to be able to produce white levels. And white levels are very important because that makes a difference if the image is not going to come out too dark and too dingy colors have to be at a pop you got to see bright yellows and bright reds and bright blues that's important of a screen being able to pull white levels so you know that's why i thought i'd come on here to this fast demonstration before i start getting back to work just to show you how fast it was easy for me to coat this now we're going to come over here i'm going to pull up another demonstration like i said it's still going to be shiny because it's wet But once you look at the white levels, how bright the image is. We ship anywhere in the world for free. So if you go to our website, we ship anywhere in the world for free. We please also ask that, please read the guidelines that we do have on our website about certain projectors the paint will not support. So there's certain projectors like knockoff or fake projectors the screen paint will not support. But other than that, I mean, you can go to, go to um, now the projector I'm using right now is a $140 720p projector. Turn my fan on a little bit here. There we go. I'll dry it a little bit. That's how easy it is to paint. Very easy to do. You don't need any professional rollers. You go down and get everyday dollar store rollers, cheap rollers, and make a difference. So one coat, very easy to do. If you want to do motorized projection screens, you can do a motorized projection screen. Go to eBay, buy yourself a cheap motorized projection screen. It doesn't make a difference. You're just gonna coat over it anyway. You know, my screens in my houses are elite screens. They are. They have all have elite screens in here. I tell you one thing, they do make a good screen. But I just bought a white one and just coated over top of it. You see how bright the white levels are? That's why I say, you know, when, if I see any demonstrations out there, and I know we're going to see them. Eventually, I will see a few demonstrations out there. People using everyday black paint saying, hey, look, this is this stuff. No, it's not. This is my stuff right here. You watch me paint it on live. So I hope everybody out there is being safe and, you know, I don't know how it's going on your neck of the world, world, but I hope it's going quite well. It's very interesting, isn't it? I've been in the house since March the 11th. March the 11th. Yep. But I've been blessed to be able to be able to run my company from my home and to be able to take care of my orders. And we're caught up, which I'm so happy. I'm so caught up on all my orders. We're caught up. 
So right now, yesterday, we knocked out. I told you we're going to have all, everybody else knocked out this week. All the 12s are knocked out this week. And um, soon we'll have the 9s, and we're done. That's it. I haven't even addressed my company contracts yet. I put my company contracts on hold to take care of my customers. We don't, the eight, no, eight, we can't compare it against the eight. And I'll tell you why, eight, it doesn't even fit in the categories of this product. It doesn't even fit in the categories of this product at all. We couldn't even produce an eight if we wanted to. Eight, the reason why the eight went obsolete is because we couldn't get the supplies to make it. We literally couldn't get it. A lot of people don't understand how hard um, COVID was to a lot of companies. It was really hard. You don't understand how much. When it first started off, I literally thought that basically I was going to just, leave, just quit. You know, I got other investments that I'm making money off of, but I was going to basically quit and not do this because it really got hard to source companies that we've been doing business with to be able to get um, uh, products needed. And for some reason, the nines we could get supplies on but when it came to the eight virtually impossible so we the 12 took its place okay well i want to do a little more today but i got to get back to work i have a lot to do i have a lot of orders i got to process and i got to get people's paint outdoors so they can enjoy their paint and uh, keep in mind uh this um Keep in mind, this is uh, this is going to be um, this is also weatherproof. So we did upgrade and we did make it weatherproof. So you can take it outside because I do have a 126 inch screen outside. Here's an interesting fact real quick. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. We have, and I'm gonna tell you why, some people say do comparisons, because we have some people that will say, well, he's selling the same paint. I already know what you're thinking way before you think it, because I've been in the business for 10 years. First things first, the eight had amazing capabilities of being able to produce amazing images. 12 had incre has incredible abilities to pull amazing images. Both paints are under $200. So where are you losing now that? And no, it's not the same. It's a whole new different formula. I'm the one who developed it. I'm the one who designed it. I'm the chemist who made it. I know the difference between the two. But doing side-by-side -side comparisons is completely pointless. And it doesn't disrupt the sale of the paint whatsoever because the bottom line is you're getting a jet black screen that can produce an image that looks like this which I painted in a few minutes. Not only that, you can use it on a cheap knockoff projector. Not sorry, knockoff. Ugh, wrong choice of word. Blah. You can use it on a, a low entry level projector, name brand, and the screen quality looks incredible. It is ultra short though compatible, which means if you were to go out and you were to buy a screen and it's not ultra short though compatible, your screen will come up black, which means you would have to spend the money for an ultra short throw screen that was specialized with your projector and it's not going to be cheap. You're talking about a couple of thousand dollars. Epson, we're, we're compatible with all Epsons. Go to, like I said, go to the website, check out the uh, shopping cart marketplace and you will see in there, there's a description of projectors we support. Definitely Epson, Epson's name right. Doesn't make a difference. It could be an Epson from 1999. It doesn't make a difference as long as it's name brand. Oh man, my back is killing me. Whew. I got I got work to do today. Oh, lions. I would love to have a lion as a pet. Then eventually it would probably be me. Man, I want, you know, tell you something really hard to get really quick? Plexiglass. Plexiglass is extremely hard to get now because now they're using it for face shields. They're using it for sneeze guards and all that stuff. And I wanted to build 
a, um, a screen customized using the 12 on a piece of clear blue plexiglass embedded with optic fiber blue wiring. But that's not going to happen because for some reason I cannot seem to get a 4 by 8 sheet of plexiglass. Now see the screen's drying? It doesn't take long for it to dry. And I got the fan on low. If I have it up too high, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit a little loud in here. Eight's trying to be on its way. Wait, wait, wait. You're waiting for your eights. Yeah, then you, your eight was already delivered. We shipped that all the eights. Like I said, eight's amazing. I need screen paint I've developed. You guys, you can see. You've seen the, the, the track record. Eight. Eights are incredible. But can't, we can't get the whatchamacallum anymore. We can't get the, um, the ingredients to make it anymore. It, ha it happens. You know, we're dealing with manufacturers, and manufacturers say they can't get their hands on it. We can't get our hands on it. The beautiful thing about the 12 and the 9, the way we developed that stuff, we have several different forms of ingredients that would actually match if any of them came obsolete. I have your tracking number, but I'm not going to say it here. As a matter of fact, yeah, your paint was shipped out. All eights were shipped out. And if you're from the UK, and I'm pretty sure you are, um, yeah. Yours were shipped out already. As a matter of fact, you have my email address. Go over to my email address. Give me your first and last name, and I'll track you down through my PayPal account. Because you definitely did get a tracking number. You're from the UK, right? Because I remember you from the comment that you put in my last video. comment about waiting forever to get your tracking number uh, when I have put out uh, five or six multiple video demonstrations on our shipping updates for our customers to watch even one update on an instant that happened where I ordered ink and the ink that came in was actually wrong they actually gave me a they gave me a 63 black and they gave me a um, 61 color actually no, 61 color and 63 color so they gave me two of the, two of the same color um, cartridges, but one of them was a 61. They didn't match my printer. And keep in mind, when that got here, it was on, I think, the 17th is when that ink got here. I had orders going out the next day. So that was very important for me to get that ink. I had to pay extra to have the ink rushed in next day delivery. So I can have the ink here on time to print out the shipping labels, to get everything set up for the carrier to take out the next day. So something as small as ink could cause things to go disarray. So that's why people think that, oh, it just has this stuff on stock. No, everything we have literally has to be made to order. So I have somebody who comes down, takes time off their day and comes down and picks up the heavy stuff that we need. They bring a truck down, they pick up large amounts of anything we need. Everything else I have to order online. So it's a lot of things that we have to wait for stuff to get here. Sometimes we run out of stuff. So I run out of containers and stuff like that. It gets a little headache. If, it, if the tracking number is saying it's in JFK, that means it's in transit. JFK is actually a, a route. It's an international route, so that means it's in transit. That's why we give you a tracking number, so you can track down your item. That's the whole purpose. If I order a TV and they give me a tracking number, that's what that tracking number is for, for me to track it down. Now, since you have the tracking number, what you should do is you don't have to, I wouldn't call because, like I said, that will be overseas. It's within the U.S., Mind you, this is tra traveling overseas, so it's going to take some time. You'll have it. I have customers right now. I have customers that I ship paint over to in Dubai. Oh, yeah, I'm, if you're good, you're good. Then you're, No problem, no problem. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Yeah, my apologies on that. 
it's stressful. It's really stressful. A lot of people don't realize a lot of stress. And then I have, like I told you, I have respiratory issues, so for me to be outside is a no, no, no. So anything that comes through here has to be sanitized. You know, when my containers come through here, um, and mind you, as, we're talk as I'm talking to you, you're watching the screen dry right in front of you because the fan's drying the screen. So you're watching me, you're watching me paint the screen, and you're watching the screen dry right in front of you, live. But... Uh, for me, since I had to, oh yeah, yeah, no problem, problem, Drew, no problem, Drew. How are you doing today? Oh, I, I'm way back. I don't know the hours. I don't know if it's nighttime over there or morning. But how are you doing today? I hope everything is great where you're at. But um, anything that comes here has to be clean. So when our containers come through here, uh, not long. Actually, if you want, you can rewind this video because. Um, I actually put, I painted the screen and I started drying it the minute I set it up against the chairs. So it doesn't take long. I say you, uh, for a screen like the big one I have right here, I dried this in about 30 minutes. So about 10 to 30 minutes with a fan. Okay. I'm telling you, man. You're, you're in London, England, right? You're in England? Because I'm, I'm, hopefully, I was planning, before COVID hit, I was planning to actually go to London or go to England. Ah, yeah, I've been well. I've been well. I've been well. Um, just taking it one day at a time. That's all. I've got to be careful. Ah, yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. I'm, I'm planning to go one day. One day, you know, I was planning to go this year. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I want to go to England really bad. Beautiful. Yeah, one day, you know, hopefully when the world's fixed again, I'm going to England. I'm a big fan of tea. A big fan of tea. You don't know how much tea I drink. I probably drink about eight cups a day. I love tea. I have all different forms of imported tea in my cabinet. Got me a tea warmer over there. Got me bone china set. Yeah, I want to go to the tea parlors over in England. And I want to take in the museums, the culture, the food, everything. I can't wait to go. Hopefully, you know, things, you know, get back to normal. I can go down there and I can have, uh, go down and eat. We'll do one more. Anybody know when the PS5 is supposed to launch? Like, it has the most crazy thing, or either, either one, I don't care what system. When are they supposed to launch? Because first they show video shots of it, you know, of the gameplay, which looks amazing, which I'm hoping that's the actual gameplay of the system and not some generated computer. And then, they just really didn't tell, they showed what the console looked like. Well, usually after they show the console, they usually show. December is what you're hearing? Okay, okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, that would be that would be more likely around December. I thought we were gonna have it in the summer, really to tell you the truth. I thought in the summertime we we're gonna get it. I'll tell you one thing I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the VR glasses. I have the ones here, the other VRs, but the problem with those is the wires. Oh my god. So many wires, man. So many freaking wires. I feel like a Robocop, like kind of this, look at that Robocop hooked up to all those wires. I kind of feel like that when I put it on, but I freaking love it. But can't wear it all the time because I get migraines. But I, know, I found out that the, I, I know for a fact that they're going to make the other one wires free wireless, which would be a beaut. And they're going to put a fan in it, which is fantastic because those things are really hot. But they got to do something about the headsets because the headsets that come with it are pretty cheesy. I mean, you got to use Turtle Beaches or Astro Boys or something like that. Anything with them besides the ones that come with it. But I think, you know, good idea. Sony, you may want to take up. Um, you should put in an invisible visor, which means every time I have mine on and somebody comes and they wants to talk to me, I have to pull the headsets off. It would be nice if you had a button that you can push on the side and you can actually see through and see the other person. It would be nice. 
Because every time my phone goes off or someone calls me and I have VRs on, I have to take them off in order to see you call. It'd be nice to have a visor that I can click, a button I can click on the side, and it just becomes, you know, visible where I can see things like, you know, see right through them, which would be nice. All right, people, I'm going to get out of here real quick. I got to get orders done for today. I hope you all enjoyed the demonstration. Um, be safe out there. And you have a blessed day. And I got to remember how to come out of this because I don't remember. I haven't done a live video in a while. So I think this is the button. All right. God bless.